Julia, thank you so much again for joining us today. It's going to be an awesome evening. If it's morning where you're calling from, good morning. Whatever part of the world you're logging in today, it's always a privilege to have you. Thank you so much. This is single but not satisfied. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, thank you again for this wonderful evening. Thank you for you love us so much. Thank you because your eyes is over the righteous and your ears is open to their cry. Thank you for this evening. Thank you because you're already here. You said where two or three of us are. You are here already. Thank you for the angels that are here here activated to move when we speak. Thank you for this evening as we delve into questions and answers. Thank you for wisdom that will flow. Thank you for the giftings of the spirit of God that is already operating even as we speak. We give you thanks right now in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise God. If you can't speak in tongues, let's speak in tongues. Hello from Atlanta. It's good to have you in the house. Just type where, where are you, wherever you're from. We'll pray in the spirit for about one or two minutes before we start this evening, just so we cover everywhere. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Maratish do debrunta ikadushta ratosha. Unmute yourself and agree with me. It's going to be a phenomenal evening. Manta redobosha. E Sharia do Shandale Rosatia da Gasho Tilly Brando Jante Gadia do Satia Gesho Lambro Shete Lambo Tishada E Kanto Shada E Karato Shede Ponta Basia to Baranda Majete Gasala Bashanda Basia Rekundo Domo Shoto Radaba E Karato Bosheta Lambo Santa Lababa E Kanto Shade <laughs> thank you lord thank you lord father thank you again it's going to be awesome you're already here your spirit is here hallelujah thank you Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for all you will do this evening in Jesus' name. If this is your first time of logging in, this is Single But Not Satisfied. We're a platform and a ministry committed to mature Christian singles who are looking to be married. So if you are mature and you're single, but you don't believe you should be married, you're not on the right platform. So sorry. But if you believe that God has a provision for you, just like we believe, then this is the right platform. Today is going to be awesome. We're going to be we're going to be having a session of questions where God is going to supply us with answers. So if you have any questions on your heart, please start putting them into the chat before we start. Before we start, let's just start. Let's worship God for about five minutes. All our speakers and in the, in the house is going to be awesome. I mean, I am super excited. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Just before we go into our questions because we have some questions already that we're going to start with. Like I said, today's dialogue. We're going to be doing a lot of talking back and forth. So if you have questions, things that are burning on your heart, please feel free to put them in the chat. But one of the, just before we, we had a time, we had a time of prayer yesterday with them, um, with all the ministers on this, on this link. And, and we know that this year, 2023 is going to be on harvest of marriages. You are not wasting your time. Some of you think, oh, we come in here every month for me. 
<laughs> you're not wasting your time. We, I know we, we've had testimonies, people have been sending in. Thank you for all the testimonies, by the way. By the way. Let them keep coming. We'll share our, our, our um, email again. We, 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 we thank you for those who are bold enough to come back and testify and those and those who, who send us emails, we thank you as well. I got an email from a chat this week and said, can we take me off the list? I have now finally found a spouse, you know, which I, th I thought that was really good. I'm like, when are you coming back to testify? He didn't really say, but I'm going to read one testimony that really struck me that came today. And my, um, my, my fellow minister said, I should read this. I'm going to read it off my phone. She said, dear SBNS, I wanted to just take time to share my testimony with you. I first attended SBNS at your last person conference before lockdown. My sister invited me because she knew I was believing God for a husband and had believed for a while. <laughs> so she felt this was going to be a place to walk into my breakthrough. Over the summer, I attended your Zoom prayer sessions. I attended your fasting and prayer session. For the first time, I fasted for 21 days. 21 days. We're going to have another one next month. I'll be sharing that with you. At the first session, someone who I deemed as a friend, after the first session, after the first session, someone who I deemed as a friend asked me out. Three months okay. later, three months, three days later, after the prayer and fasting, he asked me to marry him. I said, yes, we are now married. I want to personally thank you for your encouragement and dedication to singles. And he said a lot of nice stuff. She said her age as well. He may not have been the package I expected from God. Listen to this. But when I fasted and prayed, God said he gave me what I needed. Remember what um, the, the, um, Fumi from, from Virginia said the last time. He may not be perfect, but it's perfect for you. Before your sessions, I never would have considered dating outside, you know, she said some things there, but, but in God's kingdom, we're all the same. I thought I would share this testimony with you as I believe that SBNNS was an integral part of this new highly awaited season of my life. And then she, she thanked, thanked us profusely and thanked us very much. What am I trying to say? You're not wasting your time. Every time you join these sessions, you are not wasting your time. Next month, we are starting our prayers from the 1st of November to the 21st. It's prayer and fasting. We're going to be talking about it in more details. I want to encourage you to join. I mean, we had a beautiful time last week when we had the session with the over 50s. Beautiful times. Our prayer and fasting session, we had multiple, multiple, uh, due to your star, <laughs> we had multiple testimonies come out of this session last year. We went for a wedding in June. Our administrator, the lady who does all our recording is married now. <laughs> who does, you know? So we, we, it's not, you're not alone on this journey. We are with you, but we want you to commit time to praying and to fasting, which we're going to start on the, on, the, on the 1st of November. And we'll talk a little bit more about that session in a minute. We can go into our Q&A now. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it's always a joy to have everyone here. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yes, I can Thank hear you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. It's always a joy and a pleasure to be here and to be able to um, support you on your journey towards marriage. And today we're very open. Please come with any questions that you have. Feel free to either unmute yourself and tell us what your questions are, or you can put your questions in the chat and I'll read it up. But while we wait for you to write your questions, we have a few questions already that we're gonna start to address. And so I'm gonna spotlight all the panel and we're going to take the first question, which is, which is about insight into online dating. Insight into online dating. So I'm going to spotlight everyone. Pastor D, can you please turn your camera on so I can spotlight you? It's on. Awesome. Great. And for me. Okay, 
So we're going to start with the first question. What is your insight into online dating? And I'll start with you, Pastor D. Praise the Lord. Well, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Thank you. Um, first, I want to say thank you uh, for being here again this week, I mean, this month. Uh, like Fumi said, yesterday we had a time of just praying and talking. And I just want to reiterate what she said about how important these sessions are to us and, and how much we recognize this is a, it's a privilege. It's an honor for all of us to be able to come every month and encourage you guys and, and talk to you and, and sometimes challenge you as well. Uh, we do not take it for granted, but more than that, we, we see it as a, as, a, as a task, as an assignment that God has given to us. The, the, the joy for us is to hear your testimonies, to share with you in your in your in your success and the weekend wait and for those that have shared with us we we thank you but for the rest of you faithful is he who has called is mm. able to do what he has promised in jesus name amen question about online dating well unfortunately the history and the experience and the knowledge that most of us have had regarding online dating has, has not been very good. Most of them are from uh, the worldly side of, of, of experience. And, and that has really given online dating a lot of bad names. But worse than that, some of the so-called Christian online dating, they, they've become fishing ground for people with bad intentions and all of that. But you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You are going to meet your spouse somewhere. The place where you meet that spouse is of, in my opinion, is of less relevance to the quality of the spouse that you meet and, and, and the leading of God in meeting that person. Like for me, just read now about the testimony uh, that she received. The lady said, left to me, he won't be my, I won't even I'm good at consider him. <laughs> but somehow God in his wisdom knew what she needed rather than what she wanted. And if you trust God enough to give you what you actually need, you will find what you want in what you need once you, once you accept that with God. So when it comes to online dating, yes, it had bad names and bad reputation, but at the end of the day, tell me what is it in our lives these days that we don't do online? Mm -hmm. Virtually, we all live in the virtual world. And so... The key to online dating is go with your eyes wide open. None of us are teenagers anymore trying to, uh, let's try this, let's try that. No, there's a purpose in your searching. There's a purpose in what you're looking for. And so go with your eyes wide open. Don't let the shining object be a distraction. And on this platform we talked about, questions to ask when you're dating somebody, how to uh, 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 evaluate a prospect and all of that. So those are some of the things you will use to guide yourself. But most importantly, let the spirit of God lead you rather than your emotions. So I'm, I am for online dating. <laughs> I just say do it wisely. Thank you. Thank you. Fumi, do you want to go next? Um, I think you guys converted me. So you have to, you have more. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was old school before, before I met you. 
and then um, you showed me the way more perfectly. So I think you should go first. Dipsy, I think you you even have a you 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 have first hand experience and then you and Jolomi, then you please do go first. So um in terms of online dating, I think like everybody else, you're very skeptical. And so many years ago, I wasn't interested in online dating. I actually thought it was um it made you look desperate if you have to. Um, put a profile up and almost like advertising yourself. So I had a very negative view on it. And when I thought about going into online dating around that time, it was more popular with just anybody. You know, a lot of Christians were not really doing that. So I didn't think as a Christian, you should be doing that. However, um, I decided to just try it. Um, it happened at that point of my life. I was um, working remotely, very far away from, um, from home. I, I was living in, in the Toronto area at that time, but my job was in Chatham, so it was really far. And so during the week when I go, I go to work, come back home, I'm pretty much not doing anything. So I just thought, oh, why not? So right. I, I started to dive into online uh, dating. And um, it was interesting because I didn't realize how many dating platforms were out there. So I think the first thing is for you to decide what kind of platform you want to be on. So I started with just any anyone. And very quickly, I realized that the type of people that were on there were not the type of people I wanted to be with. So I shut that down. And I eventually found a few others. Um, I'm not sure if they're still there now, but um, there was one in particular that I thought was interesting. It was uh, christiancafe.com. And um, I think there was Christian Mingle. There's so many, so many out there. Unfortunately, I was not successful at online dating. Again, I was on it just out of boredom. I wasn't necessarily looking for anyone and I didn't really date anyone, but I learned a lot. Um, one of the things that I learned was how to fish out the scammers. And I think that's the first thing Pastor D alluded to, you know, you do have to understand that anybody can be online. So which means anybody. And so um, in your quest into online dating, the first thing you need to be able to know how to do is to fish out all the people who are not there for the right intention and not to allow them to waste your time. Um, other than that, you know, uh, I definitely would encourage it, you know, um, do it prayerfully, don't be too engrossed in it. It's just one tool in order for you to meet people, but it's not necessarily a bad tool. And we have, we have had testimonies of people who have met online. And we say online dating, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dating platform because people are meeting on social media, which is still online. People are meeting on Facebook, Instagram, and all that. What we say is to just be open because you just never know who you might meet. It may not be that person, but they may be a connection to who you are meant to be with. So just be open. And uh, I'll pass it on to Jay. Jalab. Okay, so I'll, I think I'll delve a little bit deeper into the on, online dating thing. So you, you, you've chosen a, a site, a dating site, and you've put up your profile. You've um, um, put your best foot forward, so to speak, um, your interests, and, you know, the kind of person you're, you're trying to meet and all that. And uh, after the first couple of days, you, uh, someone um, approaches me and wants to have a chat. I'm, I'm speaking from the woman's perspective, by the way. The, the, someone approaches you, um, asks your name, you check out his profile. Hmm, he looks interesting. Let's start chatting. So you do. From the conversations I've had with women and from the things I've heard, that seems to be like, yeah, I found him. No, you haven't. You're just talking to somebody. You're just trying to get to know this guy. All I'm trying to say is don't pin all your hopes on the first person 
that you come across on online dating, or the second person, or the third person, you are trying to establish a relationship. Don't think that because someone has approached you, you start setting the wedding date in your mind. Don't do that. Don't emotionally invest in this stranger until he's worthwhile of that investment. Don't um, give away yourself just because someone said, hello, how are you? Nice picture. It's not enough for you to close out the rest of the world and focus solely on this person who you don't know, never met. Have an open mind, have a discussion, build a relationship. It's in the process of building a relationship that you begin to feel yourself emotionally drawn to the person, depending on what's been said back to you. So be careful, be tentative in the steps that you take in online dating and go with in the direction that the guy is leading you in. Try and get to know him as much as possible. I feel it could be interesting when you, when, when you meet someone online. I feel that like you meet somebody online, you don't know him from Adam, you can start doing further investigations, trying to find out who he is, what other kind of presence. Most people have Facebook, most people have Instagram or, or TikTok or whatever the case may be. Start trying to investigate to see if you can find anything else about this person online that might give you a clue into who he really is. And in the process of doing that, you get to know the person. And because you are being very tentative, you, you don't get too emotionally invested immediately. So go about it gradually and build a relationship, build a friendship. And then if he warrants the attention, if he warrants the uh, emotional investment, it will, I believe, flow naturally. But it doesn't have to be that the first person you meet or the first person that says hello to you, that's the person, no. Be cautious and enjoy the process. I think uh, it would be interesting, and I think it can be interesting, but you have to make it interesting. <laughs> Someone's having a go at you. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if there are any questions, please, I'd like to, I'd like us to, let's be interactive with the questions. Or if you um, want to interject, you want to say something. Yeah, if you want to share people, your experience. I know some people have so. had some, some negative experiences, but I'm not sure who said it. We cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know? I mean, during COVID, I, I know two people that got married during COVID. You know, they met during COVID, they married during COVID. You know, they met on a Zoom link like this one. You know, so don't, don't, unless um, the man and woman of God, if you want to say something else. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm... I just wanted to share the joke and this um, person is actually right. Yes, there are all kinds of characters online. So you do have to take everything with a pinch of salt and not be carried away. Um, some people say like what they wrote in here. I'm sure many of you have, have can read it on the chat. Um, don't be carried away by flattery because a lot of times it's flattery and they're not necessarily true. So just have a giggle and move on. Thanks for sharing that whole you. Can I so, ask the panel, can I ask a question from the panel while we're talking about this? Sure, go ahead. When it comes to online dating, should you restrict yourself to within your geographical location or should online dating accommodate long, long distance dating as well? I think it, should, it could be open or it should be open. I mean, um, because you never know who you would come across. Uh, you never know if the person that you're speaking to is willing to relocate or maybe he's already thinking of relocating to, to, to where you are and you are providing the perfect opportunity for that to happen. So I would say, 
that you can you should always be open um never shut a door unless you know it's like a dead end and you know it's not going to go anywhere i mean there's no there's no problem being if being friends with someone you don't have to um, be speaking to the opposite sex and always believe that it has to be a relationship. You, you can have friends who are people that you just talk to. Fumi is my friend. Are you not my friend? He was. He had moved to my brother. I moved, he graduated from moving my friend to my brother. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to say, I think I've said this before, when a woman is a mature single, it's a bit challenging for her to find a male friend at that time because she's not looking for a friend. So if you're really, really looking for a friend, don't don't be too don't go and flatter a mature woman. You are not, especially if you are single, you are navigating her in the right wrong direction. Oh, your dress is beautiful. You see the sister in church. Oh, you are looking so beautiful. Your makeup is perfect. Your this is good. Your this is good. You are, she you are, she's already having ideas in her head when you say that. Some men are very good at doing that. You know they're good at you know and. Some men don't even know they're doing it. You know, they just say all this nice stuff. Meanwhile, the woman has started planning the wedding. She's planning her signature, how to change her name. So you have to, you have to, there's a balance to it, especially if you're single, you're a single man and you're a mature man and you know a mature woman in church, she's not looking for a friend. Don't say I'm looking for a friend. And then you are opening the car door for her, buying her flowers, buying her chocolate. You're misleading her. I agree with that. Um, but what I'm referring to is that sometimes when um, you, you go into this friendship hoping to turn into something, but it's going nowhere simply because there's no chemistry between the two of you. And by and large, you enjoy talking to this person, um, but you, uh, the woman can't see this guy as someone that she wants to be a husband. Yeah, she enjoys talking to him, but it's not going in the direction of relationship. He might be the one that might introduce you to the person that will be your um, be your husband. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that, yeah, you might have gone into this discussion, this, this hoping that it will go somewhere, but the chemistry is not there. And so you just end up being someone, someone that you talk to, someone who's a friend. Not mm -hmm. necessarily say you're going to go and look for a friend, but not everyone you meet is the right match. That can happen, but it doesn't mean that you, you, you stop talking to the person if you guys happen to have formed some kind of platonic friendship. And also, if I can just, re with regards to what uh, Bishop said earlier, sometimes men get led along the golden path as well. The issue with men mostly is that they don't have anybody to, they don't have a lot of people they can talk to and just be free to talk. And so when they find, mostly in a woman, somebody they can talk to, that kind of open up another window in a man's life thinking he's found somebody that he can really be himself with. If you find yourself in a, in a position where a brother just find you as a good listener to his stories and his issues and all of that, be careful because to him, he might start thinking beyond what you think you can offer. And that is the time to either draw a line, set a boundary, or just say to him, look, I think you should talk to some other people or some other men about this before he turns around thing and says, oh, I thought we had something going when you never even consider that at all. So it can work both ways. Okay. Just be careful how you go about it. I thought somebody wanted to say something. If you want to say something, just unmute or ping it to Dupsy and let's hear you out. Sorry. Yes, if you can let me know, you can um, either raise your voice or send me a chat to now. Raise a hand or something like that. Hi everyone, can, I, can you hear me okay? Yes, you can, la, la, la. go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, I know lots of people are gonna disagree what I'm about to say, um, and it's okay. I strongly, um, I don't know, I disagree with this online dating. And I'll give reasons. I mean, yes, <clears throat> fair enough, it's worked for some people, don't get me wrong. But I look at it as the percentage of the people that is worked for, who are they? Are they Christians or unbelievers? And 
I just um I, I thank God for this for this platform, you know, it's a Christian platform. And the way I look at it is I just want us to be very, very careful and narrow things down, you know, in terms of when you look at where, where, and where you can get someone of like minds. What's the first place that will come to your mind? And then if you look at on the negative side of, you know, where you can get someone of the other like-minded person, where is the first place that will pop into your mind? Um, then you look at it and you say, okay, um, I need to find someone. Yes, let's look at it the traditional way. The first place that will come to your mind is church. A Christian gathering and here you might go ahead and say oh yeah but you know you don't get so many men you know the ladies blah 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 and all that yes it's true to a certain degree now if you look at it on the other side and you think okay where uh where where is the place that I'm likely to find someone who is not the same like-minded as I am who's not got the same Christian values as I am the first place you might want to think of obviously is online dating, um, clubs, I don't know. But the way I look at it is, I just think the online dating who her is, um, that's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna be very open and just say what's on my mind. And I don't, I don't mean that's it in weird. any, I don't mean it in a negative, I don't mean in a disrespectful way. Yeah. I just see it as laziness mm -hmm. because I look at it as what is the extent that you can go to, to get what you want? In the Bible, let's let's be biblical. In the Bible, people that I know, I mean, I might not be so much into Bible, I might not know so much of Bible characters, but those I know, they've they've actually gone extra, they actually live where they are, or they send someone, you know, something gets done. I don't say things that just okay, I know manna fell from heaven. But in terms of looking for a spouse, you know, it's either the servant that's been sent to get X, Y, Z, or the person goes, you know, there's just some form of moving out and doing something. Mm. Online for me, you're not moving. You're just there. So whatever you see, you get, you know. And Praise God. You know, so that we don't spend too much on time of this, Lola, thank you so very much. And I think three years ago, I would have jumped on your bandwagon and said, yes, somebody else believes what I believe. But I've seen too many people married in online dating to say it doesn't work. <laughs> I've seen, even on this platform, who we went for one in June, June, was it June, Ju June, July? So people are meeting their spouses online. It's just that you have to prayerfully weed it out. When I was in my 30s, there was no online. When I was in my 40s, there was no online. And people that even married pastors are divorced. So being whether where you meet your provision is not really because God is able to say with many or with a few. So where you really meet them is not as important as who you meet. Because some people want to really genuinely meet somebody, but they are in Saskatchewan. Sorry if you are from Canada, you know, or they are from the one part of the world where it's so remote. Dupsi and I counseled a lady a few weeks ago. She lives in a village in India. There is no Christian man there. There is no church. How is she ever going to find a man? She's already in her late 40s. So there are some dynamics sometimes where I, the Holy Spirit has to reprogram my mind that you can't put God in a straight jacket. You can't say he has to do it this way. It has to be that way. I mean, I was, this, this ministers of mine have to sit me down and teach me. Do you know what I mean? interject because i know you're itching to say something <laughs> <laughs> no i mean online dating is is not for everyone i never did online dating um, neither did i so it, it's, not, it's not for anyone and i didn't do it because i didn't do it not because I, I i i deliberately chose not to do it i was aware of online dating i could have gone into it it just wasn't something i wanted to do um i felt the need to do or I might even go further as saying that I never found myself in the position of having to want to go online um, to try and establish a, a relationship. But I'm never knocking it. Um, mm, but exactly. again, 
like you said, it's not for everyone. You might, you might just not like the idea of putting your profile out there and some random guy, you know, saying hi to you. And, you know, some people might find that very creepy because that I, I don't know where you are coming from. Some people might find it exciting. It's like, wow, okay, let's see where this one is going. It's not for everyone, but it does work. And we also have the added advantage, we can pray and fast. You can pray about it. You can pray for the Lord to lead you. You can pray for discernment when you meet somebody. You can pray for wisdom to know how to, 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 to handle anyone that comes your way. In terms of it being easy, I don't think online dating is easy. I think it's hard work. <laughs> I think That's it's hard work. seriously. I don't think it's easy at all. I have to sit down and do up a profile. I have to take the best picture I can to get you know the best profile of myself online. I I have to make sure that I'm checking my mails and every single time I have to scroll through numerous of, 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 of profiles and decide who I want to speak to. I have to decide from what you are telling me if you are if if, if you are someone interested or it's hard work. It's not easy. But it's what and then it's after you've done, done that and you now start speaking to the person, you now have to figure out how to meet, where to meet, is it going to be safe? What if it's in another country? I have to buy a ticket and fly out there to go and meet you. It's hard work. But yeah, it's, it's not cheap. different if you got it's <laughs> not so different also if you got introduced to somebody else. If you go into this, somebody else, if, you still have to do your due diligence. Absolutely. You know? so whichever and that is my way, point. whichever you way you want to, to explain your... this, it's going to be hard work. If we, in, in the same city, it's hard work. If we are, another country is hard work. If it's online, it's hard work. Everything is hard work. It's not yeah, people, the encouragement. <laughs> 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 I think somebody says I want to share my experience. Uh, there's it's some BBA. There's a, Yes. Please you want to can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we, we can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. Okay. So um, I, I'd like to share my experience, my two cents to this, because it's firsthand, and I hope it can help somebody. So um, a couple of years ago, God gave, I'm still single, you know, ready to mingle. <laughs> and like so that. a couple of years, <laughs> thank you. So a couple of years ago, um, and I've been single for the last 10 years and I've been searching, this will be my second marriage, um, by the way. So um, so a couple of years ago, I, 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 I felt like the Lord was leading me. Okay, no, this is the revelation God gave me. He gave me a revelation that, you know, Rebecca was doing, was in, during, it was during the course of her everyday work that she stumbled into her life partner, right? To her, uh, her everyday work. You know, she was at the well, she was responsible for feeding the animals in the father's business and so on and so forth. And because a lot of my work, and so I interpreted that to mean that, you know, you know, online, because a lot of my work is done online, a lot of my ministry. So anyway, short, long story short, I joined um, an online dating platform that I knew was reputable, that they had a Christian version. I paid you know, I didn't do the free, you know, they have all these entry levels. So I subscribed to the real one and paid and invested a lot of money. And I think I, think I, I subscribed to about two. And so the search began. And boy, oh boy, like uh, Brother Jeremy said, it's not e uh, an easy work, okay? <laughs> it's real work. I mean, I felt like when I was in the corporate world and had to go th sift through applications for employment because I was C-suite, you know. <laughs> so I'd be like, done. I would spend hours sifting through, um, responding, trying to, oh my God, it really consumed me, consumed a lot of my time and energy. And I found myself brushing up on how I look and really paying too much attention. And I think at some point it became an idol in my heart and really consumed me, this whole idea. And um, I, I remember, you know, towards the end of um, 
last year the lord said to me give me your isaac give me your isaac lay down your isaac and i kept wondering what he was talking about initially and 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 i called my life partner in, in quotes boas you know and he said your boas your boas your boas and it took a lot for me to really get what the lord was saying because i felt confused i felt like i was led to do this search but um after i started praying and seeking him and saying okay i let go of my isaac and all of that he began to show me that he was not saying that i should um you know he was not telling me that i should go on the search okay uh, but just let telling me that i should continue in pursuing my purpose and in the course of that i will meet my partner i think the bigger question here that we may all be missing about this online dating and not online dating for me is that who is responsible for searching for a, a spouse okay who is responsible for looking? I know that we say that faith without works is dead, right? And that I feel like we have some responsibility, right? To position ourselves and things like that. But what the Lord showed me recently and, and brought me to this place of peace is that he is the responsible one for bringing you together. He's the responsible one. He gave me Adam. Adam was in position and Eve was led to him. She didn't have to struggle. She didn't go out of her way. She was led. Right. She was just found herself there. The same with Rebecca that I mentioned earlier. Rebecca was just going around her everyday business and stumbled into her marriage. You're right. And of course, like everybody has said, due diligence was conducted families and all of that and at the end of the day the rest is history with Ruth as well Ruth did not go on Boaz field um, searching for husbands she was not hostile it was that was not her motive that was not the condition of her heart the condition of her heart when she was a Mo Boaz field was just to go and work and glean field and yes. provide and all of that but then she stumbled on her miracle right there and so i i feel like you know it's not our responsibility the lord said to me that in ancient israel the fathers marriages were arranged the fathers were the one who were responsible to give out the wife that's why abraham arranged the marriage he is the father and his eyes run through and throw the whole universe. And that it is his own responsibility as a good father at the right time when he knows that we are ready to meet for us to come together. In that process of waiting, like we're all doing here, we're preparing, we're learning, we're praying, we're, um, you know, we're fasting, we're preparing, you know, and just trust him with the process of the searching and the matchmaking. That's all I can say, because at the end of the day, the whole online thing is about you trying to search out for yourself what God is supposed to give to you, right? Uh, uh, anyway, I hope that makes sense. And I hope that helps, helps that somebody helps. and all that. Thank you so much. That's Thank help. That's Sorry, can I just add something very quickly? I know that we don't want to stretch this online dating thing too much, but <laughs> just just a little question. Actually, if you don't mind, we need to move on to another question. We can come back to online dating. Okay. So just hang in there because we have a few questions already coming in. We just want to move on and then we will come back to online dating. The next... Um, in, um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is matchmaking. Matchmaking. So introducing people to each other, either through friends, colleagues, um, online. What are your thoughts about this? And then I'm going to start reading all the questions from the chat. Matchmaking. Pastor D. Thank you. In life, like in most things, you're going to meet somebody somewhere through somebody, by some accident, through a chance, whichever way. 
But you see, when it comes to uh, uh, what we call matchmaking, all you can do as a matchmaker, in my opinion, is to introduce the two people. The work is in their hands. And I think sometimes, and I've seen this in my, in my ministry, in my, the privilege I've had to counsel people with that premarital or, or after they're married as a married couple. One of the challenges is some matchmakers don't know when to, when to step aside when to let the couple find themselves. Your job is to introduce. Even God brought Eve to Adam and he said, there you are. And Adam himself said, okay, now I've got to go to work. If you look from there on, God never got involved in their issue. Just let it two of them be. There's nothing wrong with matchmaking. The question you should ask yourself about matchmaking is, the person introducing you to this person, how much do you know them? How much do you trust their judgment and character? How much do you think they are introducing this person to you? Sorry. About that. My, phone thinks, my phone thinks I'm talking to him. So how much do you think they have your interests at heart and not just trying to get their cousin to marry somebody who they think has a, a prospect. So you've got to weigh all of that and then make your own decision. Number two, if you believe that it's not working out or this is not for you, don't continue in it just because you don't want to disappoint the matchmaker. At the end of the day, this is your life. Right. You are the one who's going to be in that house with this person for what, however long it takes. If it's not for you, if it's not scratching where it's itching you, with all due respect, I have nothing against you, but this is just not for me. So matchmaking, yes, it, it happens and it will continue to do so. But at the end of the day, you've got to recognize it's you in the game, and you must be ready to play the game. Excuse Thank me, sir. You. you know, one of the things God told me, Gypsy, when I was, when I, and actually when I wrote the book, I wrote the book single but not satisfied. When I was doing my, my time with the Lord, one of the things he said is for every, for a mature single, you are only one person. There's one person between you and the, your husband. One, just one person needs to remember you. Mm. And that's it. You know, because a lot of times, as a mature single, you probably may not meet your person, your 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 provision in church. Some people may do meet their provision in church. Some people don't. But most people that are mature people, at least that I know, have met their spouses through somebody else. Which is why you cannot afford not to be kind. You don't know who is going to be who. You may not. You don't know who knows who. Who will say, oh, yes, I have a friend. That person is single. Oh, and then, you know, most people, because, and they've already done half of the job for you. They've done the screening. But you still need to do your due diligence. Like the man of God said, don't say because they introduced me to it, I'm, I'm now shackled. I'm now, he didn't put a ring on my finger, you know? So that's my two pens on that one. Dupsi, do you want to say something? Or that yes, one? I'll, 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 add to, I'll add to, in terms of matchmaking, um, I think if, if we're not too caught up in the, the word matchmaking and just be open, it's just a friend introducing a friend to you. So if you're not, if you're as open in terms of just seeing that person as a friend and then starting up a conversation, you know, because someone's matched you up with someone does not necessarily mean you're going to marry them. You still have to do your own evaluation. So just enjoy the fact that you can easily talk to someone get to know them, and then see how it goes. Uh, I think from what we have experienced, a lot of people would rather that they meet their spouse themselves. And like um, P PBA said, you know, the Lord brought Eve to um, Adam. And that's originally what we all want. But 
the Bible says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God works in diverse ways. You know, I did not expect to be match made, but that's exactly what happened to me. You know, I was just told there's this guy who's far away, but you never know. And I just said, well, sure. In my and head, brain a lot. <laughs> in my head, it wasn't going to happen because I had no intention of leaving Canada. I had no, but I just said uh, yes, because it was the right thing to say. And I wanted to be polite. And here I am today. So I think the most important thing is to be open. It doesn't matter how it comes. Just be open. If it's not for you, you're very free to walk away. But what you don't want is down the road to think back and say, wow, I wonder if I had accepted that um, coffee date. I wonder if I had responded to that email. That may have been my husband or that may have been my wife. Just be open to the opportunities that come before you and let the Lord lead you or stop you. So let me add, uh, add to that as well. Um, sometimes it's the caliber of the person that's doing the matchmaking that's the, the key to how seriously or unseriously you want to take the person that you're being introduced to. Sometimes you might be introduced by somebody who you know um, has the kind of character that you, that, that you don't really like. Show me your friend, I'll tell you who you are. Um, if you, you know somebody extremely well, I know that this person is an upstanding citizen um, whose character is unquestionable. Hello. When that person wants to make an introduction or wants to re uh, recommend you to somebody, then you have to pause and think, I know this man, I know this woman, she will, he or she would never introduce me to somebody who she or he cannot um, speak well about. For that reason, I'm gonna take this introduction seriously because I know this is not being done lightly. And you come to that conclusion simply by the, the, the character, the integrity of the person who is doing the matchmaking. And that's what happened to me. When Fumi uh, told me about um, this lady who is in Fireway Canada, I thought, Canada? Are you kidding? <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> but then I paused in my quiet time and I thought, wow, if Fumi is actually introducing me to someone, this has got to be said. I know Fumi, and I know that she knows me extremely well. I have to give this lady a call because now I'm curious. I'm curious to see, who is this woman that Fumi wants me to speak to? He just got my interest straight up. And that also eliminated quite a few things that might have been a cause for concern because I knew that she would know this woman quite closely, know her character, know where she's coming from, know what kind of woman she is. I don't have to now start trying to figure that out by myself. Just by the fact that Fumi said, I want you to speak to someone. That was it. 40% of the work had been done. The rest was up to me to say, okay, let's take it further. I don't have to be asking myself certain questions. They've been answered simply by the fact that this woman is doing the introduction. That's one of the advantages of somebody introducing you to someone else, especially if you can vouch for their character. You can vouch for their integrity. It helps a lot. So when I picked up the phone to speak to Dupe, I already knew that if the first condition goes well, then this might probably go a long way. I didn't have to guess because of the person ship. that introduced me. Uh -huh. That's the power of being matched made by someone that has integrity. And I do echo that because um, it gave me a bit of a comfort level. So even though leaving Canada was the last thing on my mind, I, in fact, I was so sure that that was not going to happen. I was still open enough and respectful enough to fool me to say, okay, if you say this guy, sure, give him my number. Now, having said that, I still went on Google. So 
<laughs> Check him out. I just said I'll throw that in. Do your due diligence. Uh, you do have you to have do your due diligence. Now the questions are coming in. So I'm going to start with questions from the chat, just so that we don't lose all those um, questions. The first one I'm going to take says, how can you tell if a man is emotionally available for a relationship? If you have previously met men, if you have previously met men who are emotionally unavailable, so which it sounds like this lady has met men who are emotionally unavailable. So now she wants to be careful when she meets a new man, how would she know if this man is emotionally available? And so we'll give it to the men. Pastor D. Thank you. The answer, the, the, the answer to the problem, or rather the solution to the problem you have is hidden in the questions you have not asked. The solution to the challenge, any challenge in life is hidden in the question that you have not asked. How would you know if he's emotionally available? From the look of things, you've been around this mountain once or twice. So you know the signs. You can see the, the, the flags flying. You can pick up the traits. But more than that, you, you, you don't have time to waste. You don't have a lot of emotions to, to, to just throw away either. And so after the initial pleasantries, uh, maybe on the third date or, or so, you've got to ask the question. You must, I know Dupsy has a 90 day rule, but I think in this instance, after the first 30, 40 days, I think you should ask the question. Because what you don't want is six months into the relationship, six months into the friendship, into the courtship or whatever you want to call it. And then you realize there is no, no future in this. That six months you can't get, you can never regain from somewhere. I'm not saying you go in guns blazing from the first they say, are you the one to come or shall we wait for another? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, look for the signs. You are, you are matured enough, you are experienced enough, you are smart enough to see those things. And be careful that you don't begin to justify them because of your, your emotional need for that connection, for that attachment. Because sometimes that is where people really get themselves into trouble when you start making excuses for the red flag and the neon sign blaring in your face. Oh yeah, but, uh, I understand that, but now you're making excuses. Mm -hmm. Try and think beyond the immediate and ask yourself, if in six months, in 12 months, this is, it's not going anywhere, who will I blame? What would be my excuse? I would rather ask a foolish question than make a stupid mistake. So look for the signs, ask the question. Thank you. Just to add on to that, and um, because you've had an experience before which had, didn't, didn't go too well, then um, there are some signs now that you, you would quickly recognize and you'll be able to cut short any um, relationship that is going in the wrong direction. Your experiences are good and, and they guide you, but most importantly, they, they, they ensure that you are alert. Um, because we are talking to matured singles here, I'm, I'm going to throw this in. Um, there comes a time in a man's life when he recognizes that I want to be married. He will consciously and deliberately tell himself 
I need to get married ASAP. As soon as he makes that decision, he, and he starts speaking to, to, to um, women, in the first few days, he's already ass, ass, assessing to see if this one could be the one. I'm not talking about weeks here, I'm talking about days. He's doing a quick analysis if he's gonna continue with this um, conversation, relationship or not. And so I say that because when a guy has not indicated that direction that he's going into the neck in the first three to six months, it's either he ha it has never really occurred to him that he should get married or you're not the person. If he wants to get married, trust me, you will not be the one that is moving on. He will be gone before you know that he's, that, he, that, that he's not interested. He will be gone. Do you any? Yes. So when you're having these conversations, it is, and you think this is dragging on, just like Pastor D says, you can ask those specific questions. As a matter of fact, from your level of conversation, you should kind of have a feeling of where this is going. The problem is sometimes we see those and hear the things that he's saying and we say, oh, I think I can change his mind. I think, I think maybe it, 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 it will change next week. He's not going to change. He's not going to change because that's not the direction he's going. You, if you clearly see the signs, don't talk yourself out of what you've seen. Don't try and rationalize and make excuses for his actions, words, and behaviors. Take it at face value and act. Now, if for any reason at all, you have misread those signals and you've made a mistake and he's genuinely interested in you, trust me, he'll be on your doorstep to get you back if he really wants you back. So either way, you can't lose. You ask a direct question, and you get the answer you're looking for, and it's not the it's not it's not the right answer, and you're moving on. Or if maybe you've misread his signals, and you know you you, you, you try to, try to pack it in, but because he's really and truly interested in you, he will come after you. He will try and convince you that he's the one. Either way, you can't lose. Where you lose is seeing the red flags and ignoring them. That's the only time you would lose. And if I can just add something to that, even when, if for argument's sake, you read the signs wrong, if like Jeremy said, if he's interested in you, he will, he will, he will take it upon himself to explain and convince you that what you are reading is a wrong signal. Number two, don't give away too much too soon because men, they can smell that from a mile and they will take advantage of that. And I'm not talking of sexual intercourse only, I'm talking of your money, your boundaries, your, your, your dignity, your 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 virtue, your, your, your work with God. Don't, don't, don't start to compromise too quickly and too widely. Because then when you try to rein it in, it will be more difficult, if at all, if it's going to be possible. Amen. Amen. That's great. Thank you so much for your input. I think um, the only thing I will add is, um, again, um, we have mature Christian singles here. When you're talking about emotionally unavailable, I think as a woman, it's something that we can detect very quickly and very early. So especially because you've been burnt that way, I think your radar should be really, really on. on point. Yes, when you meet a guy. So that would be your first filter. As soon as you see that, don't invest your time, don't invest your emotions, let it go. 
You don't have to wait for the 90 days, just let it go. And like the men have said, if he is, um, if, if, if you're misreading him or he realizes, he will come back if he's for you. But the last thing you want is to be emotionally invested with a man who's not emotionally invested in you. So um, I hope this has helped. Mm -hmm. So we have other questions coming in. I'm just going to read, um, I'm gonna scroll back to a previous question. Uh, I can't find it. Okay, there we go. This, this uh, It's a bit of a comment, but I guess we can also address it. Most Christian men are not going to be in your church or any church. Many men don't like going to church. There are ways to indicate on your profile. Okay, this is going back to online dating, but let's just assume it's a general profile, what you're looking for and to to sort among those that are fake. And she also says, plenty of so-called children of God are in the church and are lying demons. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, she just recommends that it's all about prayer and, and, and asking for discernment. So this mm -hmm. is, and I think I've seen a few questions like this that are similar saying, there are not as many Christian single men in the church available for the women. So how do you address the fact that, okay, maybe some people are, are, are not going to go online. Where else can they meet this Christian single man other than the church? We've talked well, about- I think- Sorry, it's Pastor Dean. No, no, you go ahead, Phil. No, like I said, God is able to save with many of the few. We can't, as long as our own is to pray, God's own is to do. You do that which you know to do. If you want to go online, fine. If you want to, God is master matchmaker. You can't put God in a straight jacket. He knows where your provision is. That's what that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let him get him for you. He doesn't have to be in your church. If you have to marry somebody from your church, that church is a cult. He doesn't have, I didn't marry anybody from my church. Duty, did you marry from your church? He doesn't have to be in your church. You know, God has children all over the world. What happens is when you want him to do it your way, that's where there's an issue. It must be this, it must be five foot tall, it must have a car, it must be from my village or from my tribe, you know, or, you know, all those things are just putting barriers, which I'm not saying God cannot do, but don't just be, say, God, you know what's perfect for me. And I believe you are able to connect me to the person and let you do that, which you can do and leave God to the rest. Let God do the rest. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna take a very quick question. What are your thoughts about interracial marriages? Are you narrowing your options by believing God for your nationality or even your tribe? I think I'm not narrowing options. options. As, <laughs> Go on. There's only one, there's only one <laughs> race. race in the church. <laughs> and that's the human race. That's right. <laughs> um, whether he's Jamaican or As uh, Afghanistan, Iranian or Canadian, at the end of the day, when, when, when you look at the, the work of God, when you look at God in his, in his glory. His bigness. I mean, don't make, don't create barriers for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, if you marry somebody who speaks your language, kudos at least. He, he, but don't make that a, a, a condition for God. Because what you've then done is, okay, I'm a Yoruba man. If I say the only person I, I can marry is a Yoruba man. So number one, I've cut off about 75% of Nigerians and 100% of the rest of the whole world. How, you can see how small my fishing pond has just suddenly become. Uh -huh. And I don't live in Yoruba land. I live in England. So... Can you see how how tight are my 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 fishing boat is getting? Let God bring you to the person that will be a blessing to you. Many people have out of it has to be from my village, it has to be my tribe. They have to speak my language. They've ended up in a marriage that they know 
they should not be. And then, oh, they're abusing uh, this and that. And then you look back and you say to yourself, I know I shouldn't be here in the first place. If only I'd been open to God's plan for my life. Is it bad to marry from your tribe? No. Is it bad to marry from your country? Not at all. All I'm saying is, don't limit God. Be open. He knows where that which is yours is. Like we said at the beginning, he will, God will bring you what you need before he gives you what you want. Yes. I think I'm John, not... before we go on, we've got We're two gonna... videos on YouTube. Smart step families and blended families. Remember those couple that came to talk. If you go on YouTube, you, they, they talked about the pros and cons of interracial marriages, you know, marriage, marriage outside your tribe, outside your culture. It has benefits. Everything has pros and cons. You could marry from your village and you could split up and you could marry from around the world and you could be happy. Jolomi, sorry, I bought it and you can yeah, go on. It's okay. So um, what I'm saying now is not in any way in contradiction to what Pastor Day has said. I'm, I'm just going to add on to it to bring a different dimension to our understand that we have different kinds of people um, out there um, um, who, who would say, for example, what if I'm more attracted to people who don't look like me? <laughs> exactly, exactly why I want to say this. <laughs> So if you are of the persuasion that, you know what, I hear what you're saying and, I, and, I, uh, and, I, and I'm not limiting God, but personally, I just, I can't marry anybody else. It has to be from this tribe or from this country or has to look in a specific different way. That's your, not only your conviction, but also something physiological to you. You, you just can't do it. I understand. Get ready for a fight. Prayer and fasting. Make your requests known unto God. He knows you. He knows how you are made. He has numbered the hairs on your head. So if that's what you want, then ensure that you go to the right channels through prayer and fasting to obtain it. He will not deny you of anything that is good for you. So if you are saying that, yes, I hear you, Pastor D, and yes, I can marry anywhere, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm not limiting God, but however, this is my own peculiar situation, then you have to be ready to fight for what you want under the banner of prayer. Because he will not deny you anything that's good for you. If that's your persuasion, then go down it in that in that manner. Come before the Lord, make your request known to Him. It's not against the word of God for you to want to marry from a specific country or a specific tribe. Ask the Lord for what you want and believe and trust and build up your faith that you will receive that person exactly as you have asked for. Great, thank you. So I'm gonna take another question from the from the chat. And I think and the I, women should answer the next question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and I think we we're going to we're still going to add more to the last question. What if you're not attracted to people who do not look like you? So I think this is very broad. Um, people who do not look like you could be anything, you know, is it the is it a different skin tone or is it a completely different race? You know, um, are you very tall in your family and these people are not very tall? So it could it be- It means anything. race, you said race. It means race, okay. So in terms of race, um, like Jolomi had said, yes, if it is, peculiar to you and it is good for you and it is what God wants for you for sure if you pray and you trust God you can have the desire of your heart now having said that though you cannot put the whole 
character of the man or woman that you're going to live with in the color of his skin. There's a whole lot more virtues than the color of someone's skin or race or anything. You've got to look beyond all that. So it's not that you won't get the desires of your heart. It may take longer. And then when you do get this person of the same race, what if there's a particular character that they have that is not very, um, um, what do I say? What kind of character? Nice. <laughs> yeah. not very nice. it's not, it's not very nice. Are you going to accept them because they're the correct race and you will compromise on the character? So I think this is something you also prayerfully have to say to the Lord. You know, this is the kind of person that I like. This is the kind of race I like or whatever. But, but open my heart to accept what's good for me. We have so many wants when it comes to relationships, right? However, God gives us the, our needs. What we need is what he gives us. And many times when he gives us what we need, we get our wants in there. It's hidden in there. You know, I was so sure the long distance relationship was outside my, you know, desire whatsoever. As far as I was concerned, Canada was just too big for God not to find me one, just one man in the whole of Canada. I was ready to fast and pray until he comes. But when the Lord chose, I had to pack up and leave everything and leave the country. So for me, it wasn't my want, but it was what I needed. Because when I made that decision, it was exceeding abundantly above all I even desired. So you need to be open. Don't sabotage the blessings of God because of a particular need that you're looking for in a partner. You know, sometimes they say, be careful what you ask for. So that's just what I would do. be open. Mm. Praise God. Did you want me to say anything? Uh, for me, yes, please. Please add from a yeah, woman's perspective. Um, actually, what I want to say, and I've, I'm sure I've said this in every meeting, is filtered through in every meeting we've had. Israel wanted a king. It was a good desire. But what's that what God wanted for them? Sometimes what we've built up over the years from what we've watched on the internet, what we've watched on movies can cloud what perfect gift God has for us. There is no way, I say it online again, I've said it, oh, look, I will have married my husband if God had not stripped some things off me through prayer and fasting. He didn't fit the pedigree. He didn't fit a lot of things. He didn't. I like people that were, he wasn't as posh as I expected. He wasn't, there were so many things that I thought was important at that time that now in my fifties was actually nothing, nothing. You want to marry a six footer. You want to do this. They are very good. He must be good looking. He must have straight teeth. <laughs> have you ever said that to anybody? He must speak Queen's English. He must do this. He must have five degrees, two degrees. I had how many before I married my husband? All those things are good qualities, but in the light of eternity, it's nonsense. It doesn't hold water. Dupsy said one statement, don't sabotage your chances with some of what you say are what I desire but are not necessarily of, in the grand scheme of events, is nothing, is nothing. Please, if you've heard anything, we've said it all over the years. That girl that sent that um, testimony to me, one of the things I needed to say is, she's black, she's married to an English guy, a white English guy, now, happily married. She said, I will never have looked at him until I started attending your, your platform. She's in her mid-40s. Why would you want to wait five more years? Remember the testimony we had that day? Five more years, six more years, seven, mm -hmm. 10 more years. Because 
because oh he doesn't he's not this he's not that if god gives you a man for me said something on friday he may not be perfect but it's perfect for you if you want the 50 plus remember if you want the 50 plus program he may not be perfect but it's perfect for you he may not speak like the queen but it's perfect for you he may not have, he may not be, uh, he may not have a, a degree in psychology and work in Chase Manhattan, but it's perfect for you. The important thing is, does he love the Lord? Does he love the Lord? Is he a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is this person teachable? We have a whole video that Jolomi broke, I think 17 points that broke the internet on that one. Is he the one? Go, go look at that. <laughs> And see, Lola, I know Lola, I know, I know Lola, Lola, I know you, I know you were married. <laughs> I never thought I would marry an evil man. I never thought I would marry, do long distance relationship, talk less of. And now she's Mrs. Okoro. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. And we that was me so funny. <laughs> sorry, I've had my hand up for some time. Oh, Eve has her hand up. Eve, sorry. Yes. Oh, sorry. I Wait, have, uh, okay. Yeah. Please, can um, you? And who is this that's talking? Is no, this I should have had my hand up for some time. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I had didn't see that. That's Please okay. Go Not to worry. Eve? Thank you. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on... Um, I wasn't on the over 50s when you had that. I wasn't on that. I've just heard about it just now. But I'd like to know what your thoughts are on marriage over 50. So 50 plus. Um, I hear a lot in churches, in the church, that the older ones must teach the younger ones, the younger women, how to be good wives. Um, I hear it quite, quite frequently, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, the older one that's trying to teach the younger one also yeah, has yeah. needs. Yeah. You see that you have you you you're teaching the younger ones, but you may also have a need for a spouse. Mm. So I don't know. I don't really know how that works. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If I understand your question correctly, um, I just wanted to break it down properly. So we're, when we're talking about the older ones, the older women. Now there are two categories: is the older woman married or is the older woman single? So I think, think you're about, yeah, the single older woman, the single. the single. Thank you. With my understanding, the scripture is talking about the married older women, teaching the younger married women how to mm -hmm. behave. The single older woman, uh, just correctly, as you said, does have needs and she wants to get married. So if she does have wisdom to teach the younger ones, then that's fair enough. But I don't think there's pressure on you to do that. And um, sorry you missed the last week's um, um, over 60s prayer, but I think um, it's online. maybe Jolomi wants to share something. It's online. You can read, um, you can um, watch the videos. But some of I it we had to edit. You had to edit. Sorry, we couldn't put everything online. We had to edit some of it, some of the private conversations, but we, we plan to have another one day in December. We'll let you know we communicated. Okay. Go on, sorry, Dupsi. Yeah, just to say, uh, please don't feel the pressure that you do have to teach. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you have a need, you have a need. So in your 50s and you're single, yes, you have a need and that needs to be addressed. So I hope that helps. Anybody wants to add to that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're 50 and you desire to be married, God whether you're 24 or 74, as long as you desire it, it has a provision. Mm. I would just like but, to ask you, sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, I just no, like no. to ask you, is this recorded? Because I didn't really want my name to come out on the on the recording. Um, is it being recorded? It is recorded, but this your name is not coming out. But you're not um, spotlighted, so your name won't come out. That's oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for um, asking the question. I'm going to go very quickly because there's some questions we're missing out on in the chat. Uh, what is a reasonable amount of time to begin opening yourself up to dating after ending a relationship? Six months or a year or more? Now, I'm going to assume that this relationship is a marriage. 
what is the reasonable Actually, time? Actually, I was assuming I, I was assuming that it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, whoever, what, whatever the case may be, can I, let me just say something about that. Whatever the case may be, um, it depends on where you are emotionally after ending that relationship or after coming out of that relationship, be it a marriage or be it a, a relationship as it is. What's your emotional state? What you don't want to do is to take the baggage of an old relationship into a new relationship. You need to be healed to a certain extent before you can um, go into another relationship without allowing what's happened in the past to spill over and negatively affect the new relationship. So I wouldn't put a time frame to it because they might, you might find yourself in a situation whereby you've been in a relationship for a while. And before you finally left that relationship, you have become completely detached because it took a while for you to come out of it. So by the time you've, you are completely out of the relationship, maybe in this case, maybe a marriage and you finally get the um, divorce papers, by that time, you're already ready to date because it's taking a while for you to get to the point where you got the divorce. And even before that, you were completely detached from the relationship. So emotionally, you are sound. So you can almost immediately start dating. But if you're coming out of a relationship whereby there's still a, a lot of emotional baggage, and you've not, you've not dealt with the pain of losing what you had before, then it, you would definitely... You, you, in the first instance, I don't think you'd be in the right frame of mind to date. But even if you want to do it out of spite to say, look, I'll go get somebody else right now. <laughs> it's not advisable because you, you carry the, 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 the baggage of the old relationship into the new. So you need to give yourself some time to heal emotionally before you gradually engage in um, another relationship. So again, no time frames on it. It depends on your emotional state. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to another question. Dupsi, I think we need to let some people go. We are already five minutes past oh. Oh. our closing time, time period. Nice. <laughs> we will officially <laughs> close, but we'll continue with the questions. So please, if you want to stay on, do feel free to stay on. Can we share next meeting? We'll be meeting on this platform again for 21 days. In November, we're going to be praying and we're going to be fasting. I wanted to talk a little bit about fasting today, but because our time is fast spent, I can't talk about it. But on the first day of our fast, I'll take time to tell you why we need to fast. Why, for me, why are we fasting and why are we fasting for 21 whole days? If you come on that day, on the first day, I'll take about 15 minutes to explain why we are encouraging you to fast. Then we'll go into prayers, extensive prayers for those 21 days. I'm going to encourage you to join. 90% of the testimonies that have come out of single but not satisfied people getting married has been people that have actually done this 21 days of prayer and fasting by themselves or corporately when we had it in November. So this is a grand opportunity. So we look forward to welcoming you on 1st of November at nine o'clock UK time with the details, okay? So God bless you. Thank you. If you can still continue to wait, please continue to wait. We'll go into the other questions. But if not, God bless you and see you on the 1st of November. Thank you for joining us again. Dipsy, please feel free to move on. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to continue with questions. And please remind me in case I've missed, I think someone's asking to look for some of this. Please let me know. Um, Here's a question. Please, how do you handle a man or men of God who God has revealed as the one or the ones for you, but nothing is happening? Who is delaying who? Who seems to be waiting? For you? Who is the <laughs> is that for me or Jolomi? I think I am. Um, uh, I'll, I'll start then, Pastor. Okay. You can you can add on to it. So. Great. Thank it's you. one of the questions that I don't know how to put it. Um, 
I'm always very cautious when someone says, thus said the Lord. I'm, I'm very wary when someone says, the Lord said to me that he is the one. Based on my little knowledge of the Lord, I kind of think he will let the other person know as well. And I, I think that there should be a little bit more, little bit more chemistry that would lead to something. Even if he was not informed, the minute you guys come together, speak together, or have something, something should develop almost immediately that would lead along the line of, okay, you know, this is leading to marriage. So I'm very wary when um, people say, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Um, and I would like us to be cautious as well when we come to that conclusion and then blame the guy for not listening to the voice of the Lord, so to speak. Because he might have, I don't know when you say the Lord said it, how, how, did he, how did he communicate that with you? And if we are talking about the Lord, then, you know, I really do think that this should be easy because it's the Lord's, the, the Lord has spoken. When he said, let there be light, there was light. There was a separation of the earth from the waters to the mountains and the valleys were created. If he had said a thing, it will come to pass. And nothing can stop it. No door can be shut, no window can be shut because the Lord has spoken it. So I'd like to be very cautious when we say, thus said the Lord. That's what it. Can I just add a little bit more to that question? Yeah. The, yeah. The, same, the same person, just like um, you had said, um, they believe the Lord has revealed it to them, but the other man has not responded. So he goes on to say, is it that one person's eyes are veiled and the other one is immature? Is one maybe, or is, is maybe the woman is too awake in the spirit and she needs to sleep? But again, like I said, if, if the Lord had brought this, uh, has spoken this, when the two of you meet, then chemistry should happen instantaneously. That's my belief. Because what's the point in saying that the Lord said that I'm, I'm, I've, I've met this man or I've met this woman and we've been speaking for the last two weeks or three weeks or three months and, and nothing is happening? Uh, I don't know. I don't think the Lord says, oh, oh, this is the man for you, but I'm going to make the two of you wait for the next three years before you, before you realize it. I, I just don't think that rings a bell with me. That's what I'm saying. If you're in different countries and you've not had the opportunity to meet, then maybe, you know, something is happening somewhere down the line that, that the two of you would meet and man, there'll be fireworks. But if you're within the same vicinity and you're already having discussions amongst yourself and there's nothing happening, hmm, I don't know. Can I add to that? Yes. So we're assuming that they're in the same vicinity um, we're also assuming that they have, they have been having conversation. Um, that might not actually be the case. It may be a case where the lady senses that this is what the Lord is telling her concerning this guy, and this guy has not made a move. And again, this is... Um, so they're in contact then. If he's not made a move, they're in contact. Uh, I'm just assuming. So this is what I'm I would assuming say. along with you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I'm going to say from a woman's from a okay. woman's perspective. I would much rather you say that there's a guy that you like and he has not approached you and you've been praying about it and he has not approached you. It's a lot easier than to say the Lord said. And to say the Lord has revealed. Because we don't know. I can't say the Lord revealed or did not reveal. But many times, because I'm a woman too, and I used to be single, and I have I had tons of single friends, and we've had this conversation many, many times as Christians. When we say the Lord has impressed in our hearts, we need to dig deeper. It's a lot easier to say, I have 
interest in this person and take it to the Lord in prayer. It's easier to do it that way um, because it can work the other way around. There might be a guy who felt, who feels that the Lord has impressed in his heart that you're his wife and you have absolutely no interest nor any desire or, I mean, it's like just water and oil. Would you now say, because the Lord has revealed it to him, you are obligated to respond. I think it's, it's easier to just accept that you have a desire for this man and there's nothing wrong with that. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And if he is interested, he would approach you. If he's not interested, there's someone better than that for you. Don't look at it as a loss and don't look at it as some spiritual warfare. Just keep it as simple as it is. God has someone better for you and let that person approach you. Does anyone- if you want to go, if you want to go, Joel, let me say something. How do you hear God? Because yeah, if you've was... not had God in other areas, how come is this area that you, if, you, if you're a pro at hearing God, you know, he, you, he tells you who the mechanic to take your car to. He tells you everything. Take your phones out. That crypto is going to crash. I mean, you're just very spot on when you hear God. Then you could be spot on in this area. But if you're still, you know, baby steps in hearing God, hit and miss, <laughs> my dear sister. Some guys can be really attractive in church. Very fine boys. But alas, they may not be yours. You know, that's what I think for a girl is a bit different because you see a lot of guys that you like, but they may not necessarily approach you. You know, so with the guys, if you see the girl, you can go and talk to her. But I don't think it's the same with the ladies. Sorry, um, Jolami, you can go on. Nothing I wrong, I would say, with a lady approaching a guy. Nothing wrong. We're talking to a guy. I mean, it takes a lot of both, but nothing wrong in starting a conversation. If you do feel led to do that and you're, you know, you can be subtle enough to just kind of test it out, then by all means do that. But don't be stuck and put your life on hold because of a prophecy or a revelation that you think is of God. Mm. Don't put your life on hold because of that. Because again, you may be sabotaging yourself. Okay. And I think there's a little bit more. God is not the reason for the delay. There's actually no conversation between them. The man was in a relationship, but the person has now disappeared. So this sounds to me, the fact that you're not having a conversation, then this is all just you. You can expect that he will have um, a, a spiritual revelation as you have. So I would say, just treat it for what it is. You know, you have a desire. If you're bold enough to strike a conversation, start with a conversation and see if a friendship would develop. And if not, then just leave it alone and move on. Okay, so there is um, another question. Age differences in relationships. What is your take on age differences in a relationship? So we're talking to mature Christian singles. Um, for the mature women, are they okay with dating someone who is a lot more mature than they are or a lot less mature than they are? And this, on the flip side, for the men, we're speaking to mature Christian men. Are they open to dating a woman who is a lot more older than them or a lot less? What are your insights on that? Let the men go first. Cassidy. <laughs> Amen. Um, I think the first thing I want to say is the difference is differentiate between age and maturity. Uh, it was late Ed Cole that said to be, to, be, to be male is a matter of birth, but to be a man is a matter of choice. Age is a natural phenomenon. 
For as long as you're sleeping, waking up and eating, you continue to grow. And the years will continue to tick back. But my theory is, talks about the acceptance of responsibility, the recognition of, of, of what you are, why you are, who you are, where you're going, and all of that. But in, 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 a, in a setting of this nature where marriage and getting married or relationships are concerned, Personally, and a lot of you may, may disagree with this, personally, I think it's down to individuals. It's down to your preferences, down to, as long as you're not, you're not dating an underage. I'm not saying you are 75 and you married somebody who's 22. I mean, obviously that, that, that's just taking the biscuit. The question you must ask answer is there is more to read than saying I do and now you're husband and wife. If, it, if you are 50 and he's 24, 25, you must recognize that 15, 20 years down the line, whatever seems is significant now in terms of differences between you and him or you and her. In 20 years time, that difference is going to be a lot, it's going to be more open, more apparent. The differences in your, in your physical and your emotional needs are going to be different. Now the question is, can you handle that? Are you able to manage that down the line? And you must answer that question and answer it truthfully. Secondly, you are 50. She's 23 or, or vice versa. What about the issue of having kids, children? How are you going to manage that aspect? or you are 22 and she's 55. As far as she's concerned, issue of children is uh, that we've crossed that bridge, but you're still in your 22, 23. So you still want to child. How are you going to reconcile those differences? So I think those are the issues you must think about, not just the fact that you have differences in, in, in the calendar years that you've counted, but what are the long-term effect or how is that going to affect your relationship going forward? Count the cost. If you think you're able to pay the price, hallelujah, but be careful because you may just be setting yourself and be setting the other person up for future trouble. Thank you, Pastor D. Um, I think someone just put a comment saying, um, except if the Lord brings them together for the kingdom. For example, Derek Prince was about 25 years younger than his first wife. So that was the comment. Now, having said that, there's another comment, which is really good. There's a lady on the platform who says she's 58 and online, and she will go eight years younger and 10 years older. I mean, for me, this is a lady who's open. Yeah. She says she will go what? She will go eight years younger and 10 years over. That's, that's, so that's very- exactly what we that, are, that, that's, that's, not, that's not unreasonable. Yeah. Not that's at all. not definitely unreasonable. So that's you, very- You, you, you set the parameters around which you are, you are happy to operate. Yeah. And, and, and that's okay. Like we said, uh, what Pastor D is saying, go into this with your eyes open, knowing fully well the consequences of your choices, if at all there are any consequences. So you look at the pros and the cons and you accept both of them. Um, so, uh, they, so in that sense of the world, when you do go into that relationship, actually there are some um, uh, women who prefer to have hours. younger men. They will prefer to have a younger guy. There are some, um, some guys who prefer to have an older woman. 
you know, just sometimes sometimes it's just natural. That's that, that's just what their preference is. But if it comes down to choices, then I would say just going to the and um, if you know you can't handle it because you if you are a woman and you you start um, dating or marrying a guy who is five years older than you, and all of a sudden when you're having an argument, you start throwing his age in his face. I'm older than you. <laughs> if you know you can't, <laughs> if you know you can't handle it, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> It's not supposed you to be. Talk a to me like that. I'm that, older that, than you. I'm older than you. I could be your mother. You know, <laughs> if you can't handle it, stay away from it. Um, just know that you are going to go into that relationship on equal footing, and you'll always be like that. And in that case, age is truly a number to you. But it's not it's supposed to be used as a battering ram or a weapon to win an argument in a relationship. Thank you. Actually, that is um, that is really. A very good thought. Um, age is a number and it's very, very personal. So you cannot compare relationships to relationships. You have to know who you are and what you can accept and the other person as well. And like Pastor D said, you do have to look at the pros and the cons in, in terms of the age. Now, every other area of your relationship may be flourishing, but as long as both of you are in agreement that there might be challenges and you're willing to work through them, then age truly is a number. Having said that, I do also want to bring this up because um, we talk to quite a lot of um, mature Christians, Christian women, and one of their concerns is that um, men, that they are hoping to date them, maybe two, three, four years older than them, on a general note, are typically interested in women who are 10, 20 years younger than them. And it becomes a problem. And I mean, I've been in this, um, on the other side, when I was, I was still single, wondering, you know, why will this man not be interested in us? Um, me and my single friends that are closer to his age, you know, and he would rather be dating someone who was younger. Um, at that time, I didn't understand too much. But now that I'm talking to Christian women, I have to also point out to the fact that um, older Christian men might still be interested in having children. So because of that need for them, they have to go towards an age bracket. So it's not necessarily because they're rejecting you, it's because of the need that they have. And so don't be too um, upset or judgmental if an older Christian man is tending towards a younger Christian woman. Again, the one that's for you would love you and, 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 and look for you for who you are. Anything else you wanna add for me? From a woman's perspective, it's not that. Oh, okay. All right. Please, if there's anyone who has a question and you want to just um unmute yourself, please let me know. Um, try yes, very... I asked a question in the chat. And, okay. Um, Did I miss it? I think it? you might have missed it. Yes, I was talking about. Is it possible? And I want this the men to to <laughs> probably tackle this one okay. okay is it possible to i am a very um well put together confident strong woman right yeah but i think i'm also friendly and approachable that's what i think i i also have very strong boundaries right you know so you know, I, I'm not desperate or thirsty. I don't give out that kind of energy. But I have been double guessing or questioning myself because for me, sometimes it's not like anybody's not even saying hello there, right? <laughs> and I'm a fine girl. You wouldn't even have to say to myself. You know, you girl. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I have to say to myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm eating like fine wine. I'm waging backwards and everything. I have a lot going for me. You know, I'm, I'm a good person. 
and not even like how I, nobody's checking me out right so sometimes i'm asking myself but like, is it that you're too you know your aura is just too impregnable and you're just giving off this energy that is putting off men you know that's me sometimes you know and without wanting to be extra friendly and flirtatious you know um and and be the one hunting and approaching and being desperate to go after men which i don't think is my place anyway um the other the other question is the question then is okay for guys a man if the right guy sees me will despite you know irrespective of whatever quote and unquote walls that i seem to have around myself are men naturally hunters that they will scale any mountain and come after what they want or is that there is there something i need to work on as well on my part maybe to kind of i don't know what else i need to do you know because like i said i feel like i'm friendly enough but i'm not flirtatious and i i just try to carry myself respectfully right yeah. so i don't know what are your thoughts regarding that and like That's i said nice. i'd love the men to, <laughs> to tackle this <laughs> thank you very much I mean, first of that's all, a good, I've, that's a good I've, one. Um, I'm gonna start by saying that um, I like you already. I mean, you've got a wonderful personality. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bro. <laughs> so that's, that's really good. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with your personality at all, and you should definitely be someone that men will find attractive to speak to because you can hold the conversation. You're confident about yourself, and you know where you are at, um, and uh, you, you also know where to draw the line. Having said that, I'm going to add a little bit more to that by saying that there are people that there are men out there who are not as they are, they are timid. I'll, I'll use that word, not because they are not confident in themselves, but because they just feel that they they don't want to be all out there in the face of everybody else, and they they, they might find. Some, some people's character are a little bit too overwhelming for them and therefore they don't want to go there because they feel that they'll be drowned in that relationship. Um, but it's not because they, don't, they wouldn't like that kind of a character, but because by the very nature of who a man is, he will always like to see himself as the dominant person in the relationship. And if he can't see that, then he doesn't want to go there because it's almost going to be like a conflict all the time. So um, when we go into the office environment, both men and women, we feel that we have to be strong to be able to mark our territories and to progress within our careers. And that's all well and good. It's a dog eat dog world out there. And so you go in and you fight tooth and nail to get to the top. It's definitely not the same when it comes to relationship. In a relationship, there are balances and there are positions that have been naturally put in place that um, the, the man and the woman will, um, um, normally will have to adhere to to, uh, to, to to ensure that you have a fruitful, thriving relationship. If you feel that, and you've, you've said some things that's already given me an insight into who you, you know exactly who you are which is good. Um, but if you do feel that you come across too strongly or you find that the reaction of men to you is the, um, the, the kind of back off, then maybe it's because they feel that you, you, um, if, you, if they go into a relationship with you, they will be drowned in that relationship. And no man would ever want to be drowned in a relationship. The normal hierarchy of things, the man and then the woman, should always be clear. It doesn't necessarily have to fight for it. It's like airwaves. Um, if you if you're trying to tune a radio and you uh, you try to get a particular channel, the one that is stronger has a stronger um, um, antenna reception would come out first. And there comes a time sometimes you 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 can hear two channels trying to fight for the same space. You don't want that in a relationship. Um, there has to be one that is clear and one that is not so clear. So 
I can't change who you are, and I don't want to change who you are, but I just want you to be conscious of who you are and how you can fit into a relationship that will help the relationship to thrive. I don't know if that helps. Thank you. Um, there's an old saying. People will talk about you for a long time before they talk to you. Whether you hear it or not, or you see it or not, people are talking. I don't know you, but from what I've heard, from what you've said, I can almost, based on my years of experience and, and being involved in dealing with people and relationships, I can assure you, there's a long queue out there. The challenge is naturally, men, like Delamy said, men are very timid. I said something some, some years ago on, on one of these meetings, I said, don't be deceived by this macho and masculinity that you see in men. A man's ego is, is so fragile, even the cobweb is stronger than it. And if there's yeah. one thing a man can't handle, it's rejection. So for a man, he would rather stay in his corner than deal with rejection. Number two, like Delamy said, a man wants to come into a relationship and feel as much as possible that you are equal. And so the thought, it's nothing about you, it's him. The thought that he sees you at a higher level than himself is enough for him to back off. It would take a very, a man of your, of your personality, bold, confidence in himself, self-assured and all of that to come to you. Unfortunately, men like that are very few around. You don't have to compromise on who you are. The only thing you need to do, like you rightly said, is to ask yourself, what message am I giving out? What vibe am I sending out? Because at the end of the day, it is what you tell people about yourself that will determine how they relate to you and how they connect with you. With all due respect, I need you to hear my heart in this, and this goes to everybody on the platform. One of the challenges that I have seen, especially with mature, mature women or ladies is that it is easy to look at your career, look at your income, look at your standard, look at where you, what you've achieved, what you have and all of that. And therefore not comfortable to go into a relationship with a man that is at least not close enough to that level. And that could be a hindrance. Mm. Sometimes, well, not sometimes. Most times. Gold and diamond are found in the rough. Most of the clean, well-caught, well-defined men you see were polished by another person. I'm not saying going to the gutter to pick him up. But let them know there's a chance. They have a chance. And that will change things. I don't know if that helps, but I can tell you from a man's perspective, if he thinks he hasn't got a chance to contribute anything, to bring anything, to add any value to you, without you saying he's going to say to himself, if you go there, you're just going to be a boy when you should be a man. And no man wants that. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor D. I can't seem to find any new questions. So I'm going to turn it back to Fumi. Does anyone have any last 
question to put in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask before we wrap up. I just wanted to say thank you to the men to the brothers for that feedback. I appreciate it. It Thank did you, help. Thank you. Help. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else has a comment? Last comment before we go. Um, yes, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for all the contributions. Um, I just wanted to add something to um, PBA. One thing I wanted to just say is that as a mature, um, mature single woman, especially women, um, if you've never even been married and you're quite successful in your career or, you know, because you've not married, don't have children, obviously you're going to focus on something which will be your career. And along the way, while you're waiting, you'll be adding other qualities to your life. For instance, you know, um, you might even like, like football and know much about football that the normal woman wouldn't know. Or um, because you're so independent, you, you've done a lot of traveling. What I find, you know, um, is that such women are always put down like what PBA was saying. And when I mean put down, I'm, you're not married. So you, you want to do things, you want to keep living your life to be happy. And they start to say to you that, oh, you're too this or you're too that, or you, you know, even when you when you are in in a meeting with your peers or your contemporaries, you know, and you don't want to, um, what's the word? You don't want to feel sorry for yourself, but you know, you're you're happy in yourself because of what the Lord God has allowed you to achieve, despite your long there waiting. You know, people then tend to put that those people down that oh, these ones are too much no man can come near this person you know because that person you you're just gaining all those other qualities or just enjoying life with all those other things that are just accruing to you while you're in the position of waiting and so therefore i look at it that um from that perspective uh, from the woman's pa perspective you're not you're not gonna it's not every man that would is, is a person for, and at the end of the day, each and every one of us women here, we're only looking for just the, the one man anyway, <laughs> you know, so I'm not going to be called out for somebody. So I always pray one prayer, and I say this to PB and to any other person in such a position. I just pray for that the person that would appreciate all those qualities that God has given me, because while I'm waiting, I don't want to I don't just want to be miserable while I'm waiting. I want to get on with life, yes. you know, at the same time, I don't want to be put down because of the things that God has enabled me to achieve or to, or, 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 or the experiences that I don't want those experiences to be put down. Like I said, they mean nothing because that's part of my journey, hmm. you know, praise the Lord. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, F.A., for um, sharing your thoughts. Um, I think we, we would allow um, the men or Fumi, maybe you can address them. I do have a couple more questions to add mm -hmm. and then we can wrap up. So Fumi, can you please address- Sorry, them? Just, just, just one, just before you uh, hand over to Fumi, I want okay. to just add one, one thing on, um, just to add to that conversation. Okay. We are going to have the 21 day prayer and fasting. I will strongly encourage you to attend, to make a commitment to attend um, those sessions. And the reason why I say this is because sometimes we say a lot of things that are, are happening in the natural and try to attach natural reasons to um, what's happening to us, but we are unaware of the fact that there could be some spiritual reasons behind it. Just power venture, there is, then um, such things can only be broken through prayer and fasting. There's an opportunity to come under corporate anointing, and participate, and see if things can shift in the realm of the spirit. Because remember, everything that happens in the natural realm first takes place in the realm of the spirit. 
So sometimes we need to go directly into the realm of the spirit to change the course of things that so that they um, that, that that change will be reflected in the in, in the natural realm. And such things can only be done through prayer and fasting. So yes, we can talk about personalities, and yes, we can talk about strong characters, and yes, we can talk about all we've achieved, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. But there are some times that we need to attack things from a different perspective. Let's try and do that through prayer. Thank you. So I, for me, do you want to add to that? Okay, I will go to the last two questions for us Thanks on you. the chat. And um, so maybe I'll even read them together. Um, how do you handle rejection? Sorry, do so before we go to the next question, I just wanted to jump in. You said that perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. And I just wanted to say something. Out of every 10 women on this platform, I'm not talking about the men now, the women, they are successful. Some of you are senior consultants, some of you are engineers, you are well-read, you have degrees, you have your own businesses, you have your own careers, you have your own jobs. You talking, you, have, you built how many houses when you were in Canada? Personally, you designed your houses from ground. Are you still living in those houses? <laughs> When I came to visit you in your house, in my Dupsy had like how many bedroom house, heated driveway, garage. Are you still there now? No. no. I want, as successful as we are, and I was there. I had my Pastor D's here, the one that married me. I was living in my own house. I drove a Mercedes Benz, had everything. Flew all over the world in business class. Hold on a minute. The joy of motherhood. Sorry, she just joined the business class. <laughs> My son just joined the business class. <laughs> so, Go ahead. I mean, I flew, some of you know me, everywhere. I had a very good life and I was working in consulting. There's hardly, out of maybe about 50 something states in America, I've probably been to about 30 something. I went everywhere, but I was not married. So sometimes, Saying all this, I'm saying, you need to make, one of the things God told me when I started my journey, you need to make yourself approachable. You are not approachable. Who will approach you like this? I mean, I was talking to myself now. That's what God told me. Some of you are so contentious. I mean, I could argue for Olympics. It had to be my, my way or no way. You know, contentious. You're laughing at me. I mean, I've been there. To marry and stay married, there are some things that God has to do in us, which is one of the things Jolomi was saying, in us. Because it's not, not everything is demonic. Although there is a good spiritual hand there. But some of it, there's a work we need to do. Are you ready in your house for a man? I'm talking to the women now. The men, are you ready for a woman? Are you really, really ready to have somebody in your space? Your kitchen has to be spotless. Your room has to be spotless. Are you really, really ready? Are you really ready? You know, because I don't, sometimes, we are very strong women. I'm a very senior director of one of the big four. Are you really ready to be married? And when God walked me through that journey, and then we have to realize that money is a tool. The minute you put money above that, that is more than a tool, you will spend the money, you will retire by yourself. It's a tool that can be skillfully used to get your advantages in life. So when somebody comes, it may not necessarily be in any way close to what you think you should be looking for, but there are some parameters. There are some things you need to find out. Does he have this? Does he have this? Is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Yes, I can work with that. Yes, I can work with this. Yes, I can do this. Can... There are some things you may not necessarily be gold cars, may not necessarily be the, the Tiffany diamond yet, but yes, I can work with this. And that's where the work begins. Dupsy, how many degrees do you have? <laughs> like more than thermometer. <laughs> more than thermometer. <laughs> so it's not, the, it takes more. 
I'm just saying this to the women especially. We've achieved so much, but are we ready to live with a man? The man may not have as much. Are we ready to live with him? Are we ready to bring out the best in him? One of my friends, the one who on, the, on Friday said something. She said, you may be the person on the assignment because a lot of times it's what's in it for me. It may be you that will bring out the best in the guy. It may be the guy that will bring out the best in the girl. Are we ready to partner with the assignment? Everybody's looking for finished work, but finished work is not necessarily there. So make ourselves approachable, make ourselves amiable, make somebody be able to walk up to you and you just smile. What can I do for you? I remember somebody set me up on a date. The guy, I looked at him. If he saw the car he brought for that date, he will run. I knew he will take off. But I still went on the date with him just to see where his brain was at. Because some people may not have the money in their pocket, but their vision is bigger than their pocket. Is his brain there? Does he have a vision for his life? Does he know where he's going to? Does he have a dream? Sorry, I can't preach. Go on. Actually, that was funny what you said um, in terms of sometimes, you know, you may not know that you are actually breathing that um, personality or that esteem that you have for yourself. But men are very quick to pick things up. And again, that may be sabotaging you having a relationship. And also, you may also find that some men are very quiet about certain things. There's some, certain, there's some things that were very critical that my husband never told me. And when I found out, I was shocked. He, he was very humble about the things he told me and there were certain things he didn't tell me. I found some things out after I had married him. And I thought, wow. So don't be too um, confident in what you're bringing into the marriage or what you think of yourself because um, it, may, it may work against you. We all have to humble ourselves and let the Lord lead us to what's best for us because you find out afterwards some of those things that you didn't see will be a, a, an absolute surprise and a blessing when you do see them. And I'm going to go yeah. to a last question. Sorry. Pastor D, do you want to add? Yeah, I mean, it, the Bible says it. It said, the Bible says, don't think too highly. too highly of yourself. It didn't say don't think highly of yourself. Rightly, you should do. But don't have an over-exaggerated opinion of yourself. Because what that does is you look at people down and you may think, I'm just holding my place. I'm just holding myself. Okay. And you may have started with that in mind. Oh but before you know it, I mean, Fumi and I, we've counseled a lot of people. We've talked to a lot of people. And, and sometimes you hear especially, and I, please hear my heart, especially ladies, you hear, well, it's only God first degree. Yeah. Also. Well, he has his own business that is running, that is bringing in everything with long list of employees under him. But you are looking at his degree as if when it's time to cook a four-year-old, you need a degree for that. And these are little things that sometimes we don't see. Even for men, if you think I've, I've got my own business, got my own car, I've got build my own house, I don't want a whole gold digger. Well, sorry, mate, you don't even have a gold <laughs> for somebody to dig because what's the point of your gold when you? Go do all the fun fair and you go home and cry yourself to sleep at night. You go home, have a, a bath or whatever you do, and then you sit by the window with your glass of wine, your cat is crying in one corner and you are crying here. Why? Because suddenly all those things, great as they are, you're asking yourself, what will it profit a man to have all this? And now one thing, and sometimes people say, oh, well, it's only, no, it's never only. Marriage is never only. There's a reason why God said it is not good 
for man to be alone. Have your degree, have your success, have your career, excel in everything, but don't let that become the walls of Jericho that is stopping people crossing over into your space. Amen. Maybe the cat is hungry. <laughs> no, the cat is lonely. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I think there's just one last question, which I would say is a general question amongst okay. women, um, amongst uh, single women. And that is, sorry, I'm just going to scroll and see if I can find it. Yes. How do you handle a rejection so it does not impact your self-esteem? So we do have mature single women, and I think this is probably from a woman online, and it's not, not everyone is um, single because they haven't been in relationships. They've been in relationships and it's broken up for one reason or the other. However, um, when the relationship breaks up, you know, for a woman, you feel the rejection if the person is the one who dumped you. How do you handle rejection so it does not impact your self-esteem? Because you don't want to take that into another relationship. I think the, 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 the key is in the word, rejection. And I, as a man, as, as a woman, as a human being, nobody likes rejection. Unfortunately, in this life, it happens. And I think the first thing to do or the, 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 the right step to take when you are in that position so that it doesn't affect your, your, uh, your self-esteem is to recognize that the whole purpose of rejection is to attack who you are, is to make you think less of yourself, is to say you are not all that you think you are, is to say you didn't measure up. That is what rejection is. But the antidote to that is not for you to play that record over and over and over in your head. That is somebody's opinion about you that was harshly expressed. You need to ask yourself. Somebody said, gave an ana analogy once. He said, people you don't know, they don't know you can see you on the street and say, or you bump into them and say, are you stupid? Are you crazy? You just look at them and thought, what does it matter? You just walk away. Because that is his opinion of you. And all he's got is a, is a, a picture, not a movie of your life. It's a picture. So when somebody rejects you, when somebody turns you down, when somebody dump you or walk away from you, it is an opinion of, it is their opinion of you per that time. You need to now move, ask yourself, is that the sum total of who I am? Is that the true person or the true uh, image or representation of who I am, what my life is? And the, 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 the key, to break rejection is to not subscribe to that person's opinion. Eleanor Roosevelt said, nobody can make you feel inferior without your permission. It is when you repeat what they say, it's when you believe what they say, it's when you act on what they say, it's when you let what they say become who you are. That is when rejection breaks you down. Think about it and ask yourself, I can't be that stupid. Look what I've done. Look where I've been. Look how far I've gone. No, that's his, his opinion. Harshly expressed, so be. But that's not who I am. Move on with your life. 
that's what I'll say. Thank you. Any last word from you, Jelani? No, I think Pastor D has put that one spot on. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Fumi. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating. I hope we were able to help with your questions. And uh, thank you for your comments. And uh, I'll pass it on to Fumi. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. What a day, very long day. We thought it was going to be shorter. <laughs> wow, thank you. Remember, the 1st to the 21st is our prayer and fasting. To see if you can please help me share is our prayer and fasting. There, the, there's a time change on the 1st for the UK. So it's not going to be five hours time difference. It's going to be four. So please, if you are logging in from the US where it's today's five hours, it's going to be four. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward to seeing you and catching up with you on the first. Please join us. It's the same Zoom link. God bless you and thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. 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 I was just saying that we didn't come back to the online dating question, but maybe next time it was a next nice term. Apologize. No we worries. Well, let make sure we catch all the other questions. But yes, I that's what we It will be an ongoing topic. Oh, lovely. All right. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. God bless.